name is Hannah and I work as a Scrum Master in Avast. Uh, for those of you who are not aware about the Scrum Mast, we are an uh, IT company and we produce um, solutions for our customers which should bring them safety and privacy and we are hiring anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, back to myself, uh, originally I came from ABG which was also a security company and a few years ago it was uh, acquired by Avast. Uh, the main difference between those two, those two companies, according to my point of view, uh, was that uh, ABG was a company with so-called uh, implemented Agile processes, but without missing um, Agile mindset. Uh, Avast, on the other hand, uh, is a company with natural Agile mindset, but kind of missing processes. And the situation after the acquisition was quite difficult for Scrum Masters, mm -hmm. because we heard um, answer was like, we are agile enough, or I don't know what Scrum Masters do, but we don't need them anyway. And we felt really frustrated and disappointed, you know. We felt like we are losing everything we have built so far with other Scrum Masters. So uh, a lot of Scrum Masters left the company without any replacement, and uh, in the end, then just two of us remained there. Uh, so <laughs> I am a master. Um, all the rest of my energy and start to build uh, Agile company again because this is what we Scrum Masters do uh, and I would like to share with you uh, steps uh, I have taken toward, uh, on this journey and um, some lessons learned. So let's go on it. The first and mostly and sadly skipped um, step is to self-education. Uh, I believe that if you are the one who wants to drive any change toward agility, you definitely should understand what it truly means and um, uh, why you even want it. So uh, it doesn't matter if you are Scrum Master or the manager or somebody else, if you are the driver, um, then probably your, your team or your company will be as agile as you are. So that's why you should find time to um, educate yourself constantly. Uh, the first thing I had uh, on my mind uh, during this acquisition was that um, I should definitely set a good example. I believe that uh, if I show that um, we are a good working team, scrum team, self-organized, uh, that we have uh, satisfied customers and you know, the, <laughs> this stuff, that others will see it and they will ask how we did it. They will want it as well. It will open um, discussion and will be very open, you know, to, to discuss everything at, uh, uh, around or about Agile. Um, so we started to work on it very hard with our team and it took <laughs> a few years. Uh, but yeah, it worked until some level. They really came and asked us how we did it and wanted to learn and discuss everything. Uh, just be careful about one thing which happened to us and it was that after all that good stuff like uh, happy customers, happy team, no OTs, uh, met deadlines, uh, successfully dealing with technical debts and such, uh, we raised some um, suspicion among tech people, some people that uh, we are not, um, we probably don't have it, uh, so much work as others if we are able to handle it all, you know, and that uh, our work probably don't have as big priority as, as the others have, so because we are able to prioritize it and it led to very bad consequences, so <laughs> be careful about it, don't do the same mistake as I did and explain better than I did uh, why your team is successful. <laughs> Uh, the second thing was that I tried to find some allies, uh, people who were interested in Agile as uh, the same as I was, you know, at least to very fine assumption that there is at least some interest in, <laughs> in company uh, within the Agile. So uh, me and my colleague, also Scrum Master, uh, we uh, were asking people around if they know somebody like us. Also, we realized that there is some Slack channel called Agile, and there are a bunch of people, you know, it was that, <laughs> that Slack uh, channel, but um, there were some people. Um, and we started to organize Agile meetups together. Uh, it, 
it take it is organized every two weeks, and we share their uh, ideas about agile, um, self-organizing teams, um, self-development, and such you know, leadership, for example. Uh, and um, uh, it, it makes me, you know, feel more comfortable, like uh, and more motivated also because now I wasn't alone. We were together. Um, all you have to do is to create this group and take care of it. Um, because um, if you if you create this kind of group, uh, you have to you have to organize meetings uh, constantly, encourage others to bring uh, interesting topic there. Um, <laughs> sorry, I have to drink. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and and such, you know, uh, and a little by little create vision of this group uh, to avoid that you will have just another meaningless um, meeting, you know, with a bunch of people without any results. You have to create kind of self-organized people movement, so-called, uh, with its own um, goals and visions uh, to, to bring together something beneficial also for your company not only for yourself or your team. Uh, the next quest is to be visible. Um, if you want to change something, you can't sit uh, quietly in your office, you have to be loud. Um, so, for me example, um, I presented agile topics or, or the way we work in the team everywhere I could, like everywhere, <laughs> inside or outside the company, it doesn't matter. Uh, for example, at the end of this month, I have also a presentation on something we call uh, Tech Talks. And it's, you can imagine as, as a time slot for presentation. If you have something you would like to share with others, you can have a presentation there. Uh, and uh, so, so I would like to share ideas with there, and it's a great opportunity. You can, you can copy that. <laughs> That's very easy to have it. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, have on my mind that uh, the more um, the more people will know you and your ideas, the more of them are able to inspire by you and your work, and you know, also then more doors are open uh, for discussion. And if you are visible, it makes uh, other things very easier, let's say, uh, and it's uh, to get in touch with management because you can imagine that to push only something from bottom up takes much longer time than uh, to have allies or so uh, on management level and uh, uh, push it also from top down. So, for my example, uh, what I did uh, was that I asked for a regular one-on-one -on -one with our uh, director and had have this opportunity to, to speak with him uh, also strategic topics uh, each two weeks and uh, during some period, I also had a one-on-one -on -one with our CIO, and it was very beneficial. Um, yeah, that's what I call it. Also, uh, you can um, uh, share your ideas with any other managers during some lunches or, or I don't know, uh, some some meetings. Uh, just try to email them. You know, many of Many, many people just assume that managers don't care, you know, and they don't even try, so try it and you will see. Um, because what Susie always says is that all you have to do is, you know, do tap, tap, tap <laughs> all around in your company and then see what will happen. And you have to do it just constantly, persistently with everybody. <laughs> also, do be, don't be afraid to uh, ask um, bold or unpleasant questions and give uh, manager, managers feedback. Um, believe me that they don't receive honest feedback as much as they should. And they, they need it because, you know, they, they need it for, for better future decisions. And uh, what to say? Um, just you know, <laughs> don't be afraid and do it. Provide them feedback. Doesn't matter uh, how you know bold it is. It uh, if it's well meant and honest, uh, they would appreciate it. Believe me. Yeah. The sixth point is teach others. Um, team management colleagues, everybody, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Because I don't know any area uh, with more misunderstood 
um, ideas and concepts like in Agile. Maybe you know, I don't. I think that Agile is the most unused <laughs> word in working environment. So uh, you have to constantly explain everything repeatedly and uh, create environment for learning as well. Uh, I do it by informal coaching and mentoring, uh, very openly sharing my experience and learning materials and you know everything which is needed. Also, you can ask your HR for opportunity uh, to have um, uh, internal training. Uh, we have, for example, something would be called Grow Shop. You can imagine it as a as a web page, and uh, if you have something, you can teach others, no matter if it's fishing or Agile things, <laughs> you can put there just the date and the content of the training and everybody in company can can join it. Uh, so this is also a very easy way how to share your ideas and you know uh, find people who want to want to learn. Uh, what we drive is also the community of practice for our product owners, we have product owners guild. Um, where we learn, uh, um, share our skills and, and knowledge uh, by um, theoretical and practical way. It means that in the first part of the meeting, uh, somebody of us have presentation about some topic, and uh, uh, the, the second part is kind of workshop uh, where we um, try to use new acquired information, something practical. And this way, you can create any other group. Uh, what you need, not just product owners, of course. Uh, just uh, be aware that you have to take care of this group. It's the same like the the, the previous one. Well, but sometimes, <laughs> if you do your best, uh, still nothing helps. Maybe uh, you uh, need to better the way you communicate things. Maybe they don't respect you, or they are just sick of you and <laughs> your agile topics. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you will, up, will, uh, will give up. You just need to find different way how to make uh, people listen on or think about it. So what we did that we uh, have joined the exchange program between companies. It means that uh, one day, whole day, you do shadowing on some scrum master or another role for well, scrum master. So I should do scrum masters uh, for one day uh, in their teams or on their, their place. And the other day, they, they do shadowing of yourself in your team. Uh, this makes me uh, receive a lot of inspiration and also a very beneficial feedback on my work from somebody from outside. It was it was great experience. Uh, what we did, we tried to do the same thing also in our company, but a little bit differently. Uh, me and uh, another scrum master, we swap in within within our teams. So for one whole sprint, I was their, their scrum master, and he was scrum master for my team. And this experience was very beneficial not only for ourselves but also for our teams because they were able to see uh, another scrum master, uh, the way he worked and act, and the values he bring to to the team. So. Um, you know, he was able to recognize some patterns. I was blind, you know, to see. So uh, this was also great enough to recommend it. And what we did, uh, I also arranged the excursion uh, in one company for our product owners and director. Uh, this company was much further on agile world than we were. So we we came there to to listen and learn from more experience. Uh, it took about four, four hours, I think it was half day, and these product owners in that company, they, they just say, said everything about their, their job, how they do it, you know, show us all tools and everything, and it was like, oh, <laughs> it, it helped kick off uh, many ideas uh, within our department, and it was much easier, you know, to push something. I also pushed through the idea of external consultant because sometimes uh, somebody from outside to help you uh, make people listen because he's outside authority and is, for some reason <laughs> it helps. So uh, just be careful to find uh, the good one, you know. Uh, if you invite somebody with prints to agile paper, <laughs> no offense, um, it probably won't help you anyhow, at least on the agile journey not. And uh, so, so be careful about it, we were lucky, we, were, we had a really great guy and he helped us uh, reveal 
some problem we had and let's say accelerate the, the way we were able to, uh, to solve them. So at some level it helps because you, you need to do <laughs> all the stuff together. Um, yeah, but still, <laughs> sometimes nothing helps. And if you are in that situation, then just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Change department, leave home company, doesn't matter. You know, because uh, you, probably <laughs> you probably understand me that um, if you push something, you know, when it, where it's not welcome and appreciate and it's so stressful, life is too short to spend it by meaningless work, you know, so find some another company where they appreciate your work and you know yeah, enjoy the way <laughs> on a job journey again. Yeah, so by this cheerful <laughs> advice <laughs> we are getting to the end of my presentation. Uh, here you can see the list of everything I have tried um, to you know let's say move our company toward agility. Uh, I hope that some of them will help you as well. And um, I would like to mention that Judy Shokova in her book Great, uh, Great Scrum Master uh, mentions uh, meta skills which Scrum Masters should have and I would like to emphasize one of them especially and it's patience. Be patient, you know, find uh, appropriate uh, pace, you know, um, how to explain stuff and give people uh, time to understand it fully and still stay open-minded. So don't push it hard, but stay focused, you know, don't give up. Just uh, try to share everything, experiment, what will help. Uh, when they kick you out of the door, then return by window. <laughs> Just don't give up, and at the same time you will see that um, people and the world around you is slowly changing. So, thank you very much. <laughs>